So, hello everybody, welcome back to Meet the Jugglers Live, and uh, today we have got John Udry with us, and he will be with us in just a second, we have him there, he's like hanging around in the, in the back, in the, he's, he's getting like a true professional, he's behind the curtain, ready to jump in there, so um, uh, one thing we have in common with John is um, both uh, grew up in Cornwall, um, in uh, Coffee Penzance, and John more the north coast and um let's just whop him and add him to the live stream straight away so here we go hello hey John! hello <laughs> hey how's it going good good very good very good Whew. so how yeah. are you <sighs> <laughs> now we can relax now we've started it we can relax yes now we can relax and you know in this whole lockdown um what has saved me a little bit is like these live videos you know and i'll do some other live live stuff and yeah. I know you've done a, a, a lot of stuff, and perhaps we'll talk about this as well. And yeah. I found found that um, um, I get a bit nervous as, as well about doing these lives. You, you never know what ha will happen, you know. No. But this this going for it, you know, as as um, breaking through my like uh, comfort zone and my and uh, just going for it anyway has has really helped my uh, my mental health. Well, definitely, yeah, I think you have. Like, it's it's a completely different type of performance isn't it because i mean it still is a performance there's people watching I, I think i don't know but it's a really type of um it's a fully different genre like i think when people go from doing street shows to stage shows that's a very big jump as well but i think there's uh, going from like doing shows on a stage which is what i normally do to doing things and stuff at home it's it's like a whole different genre and it's taken me a long time to figure it out and i've done all of the mistakes under the sun I think uh, in re regards to online shows, but yeah, it's a really weird because you can't really get y your adrenaline going for it. D do you find this weird logging on? Cause like if I'm doing a show, normally I'll start getting nervous about an hour before and then that bill, <laughs> but then here, like I'm sat, I've got a cup of tea. I've got, I've got my, s I don't know if you can see, I've got my slippers on <laughs> and, and they kind of just, we just go into it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. I get a bit nervous anyway. But anyway, yeah. let's let's go let's go into um let's talk also about your um your uh, um variety bungalow show and um but first of all, I'm quite interested in how did you start juggling? How how what, what how was it for you? So, I started juggling when I was 6 years old uh on the beach is of Perranporth in Cornwall. Lovely beach. It's my hometown, Perranporth. So there's a guy down there who used to do these shows he was called the Great Bodget. Did you ever come across him? <laughs> so his, his name was the Great Bodget. I mean, it sound, doesn't sound like a true story, uh, but he used to put a sign in the sand saying like juggling and magic shows at this time. And there'd be like three shows a day. And he'd just do shows on the beach and pass a hat afterwards. And I used to watch them all. I used to go down to the beach with my brother and we'd just go to the beach and watch his shows. So we saw him do juggling and magic and Diablo. And I started with Diablo when I was about six, and then juggling came later, around the age of 10. Yeah, and it's just something, you know, I'm 32 in a week, and it's uh, something I've just done for forever. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Uh, pretty impressive, learning juggling at six and seven. Mm. Um, so did you have a moment where you, like, sort of left juggling it at all, or you've always kept it going? Uh, some people... I've loads of things, especially where they meet girlfriends. It happens. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I've I've noticed that. Um, no, I never left it. Actually, I never left juggling. I did leave other things behind. Like, I I still do a bit of Diablo in my show, but I haven't learned a new trick with Diablo since honestly I was about eleven years old. I just I learned as much as I needed between the ages of six and eleven. I have zero passion for Diablo. I don't wa ever warm it up. The only Diablo I ever do is on the stage. I just have zero passion for it. But like, I like watching it and I like seeing people do it. But me doing it, I, it doesn't tick any of the boxes for me. Whereas juggling, okay, Diablo, John, yeah, like, it's ball juggling. You do a lot of ball, ball and club juggling still. Uh, balls, clubs, and rings, and ball bouncing. I could do those four forever. Like, there's that that re really fills me with a lot of joy. Those four, like, I could do those forever. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, um, Mr. Bodget, did he inspire you also into comedy juggling then? Yeah, I suppose he did. Yeah, he did. Um, He was the first 
person I ever saw do like five balls and you know he, he did all of the comedy and stuff as well he's the first person I saw do street shows I mean they're on the beach but still a street show and I guess he did inspire me yeah um and he's vanished like I know it's, <laughs> I know this is sounding more and more like a fairy tale but uh <laughs> I remember I kind of I got to know him over the years. He lived in town. He was a juggler. There's not many jugglers around. He taught me a lot of things. <clears throat> and then around about the age of 15, you know, he lent me a lot of uh, VHSs of juggling conventions. So I was watching these and getting really inspired. And I would often go, to, go down to his house. He taught me how to pass clubs and all this stuff. And he's vanished. And I, I don't know his real name. <laughs> I know it's Kevin something. But, yeah, no one knows where he's gone uh he could be he could be anywhere i don't know but yeah he really inspired me a lot well so if anybody knows where mr bodget is please yeah. uh john i would lo lo really love to meet up with him again <laughs> yeah, that'd be great <laughs> yeah. yeah no no i know right? and um i have a story similar story you know like i left the uk in um in 1996 um and uh, basically my first stop was at the ejc uh convention in um in grenoble it was in, in france yeah, yeah and after this um well basically in the airplane i decided i didn't want to come back home again so i cancelled my my return ticket mm -hmm. and i was with a friend and he was like you're crazy <laughs> what are you gonna do and i was like i don't know <laughs> but anyway i met this guy this german guy and um one of the last days and, and uh, i said uh, we started chatting and i said where are you going and he said i'll go to spain i go like uh well can i come along with you and he was like yeah okay <laughs> and um it was like his first shows as well but he was a natural you know he was such an entertainer willy wonder and, what, what was his name willy what willy wonder willy he's in wonder. germany yeah i don't know he's a really powerful street show uh um you know i i think there are some street show artists you know they they really project and imagine already like a huge crowd around them oh. Yeah, so they, they, they just get huge crowds. But anyway, um, he left. He, retur he returned uh, wherever he was living. And uh, I didn't think I'd ever see him again. And then I met him 10 years later. And I was it was really Whoa. cool. Oh, yeah. So I hope you meet Mr. Budget. Yeah, I hope so too. I hope he's okay. I haven't seen him yeah. for over 15 years. But yeah, I hope he's all right. Yeah. So, um, uh I, I do have a, a similar kind of a, a story with a with a happier ending, actually. With a from the age of ten to sixteen, I was working with a company called Jungle Bungle Jugglers, who were based in Cornwall. And we did like holiday parks and all my school holidays. I was doing holiday parks and weekends, and you know, gigging around doing workshops and shows. And I, I didn't see them since I was about sixteen years old. And then a couple of years ago, I did this tour called the ABC tour, touring in all these weird places one for each letter of the alphabet oh yes yes remember yeah yeah, remember yeah. This. And i was cool. doing i was doing h's for hairdressers and i looked into the audience and there was one of the people who were in, in the company and i was like what i didn't even know that you knew where i was or anything i hadn't seen him for you know 15 years mad mm. wow. so, so always think well, how i see you is like uh you're always like you're trying to find new ideas about how to get out there and um quite passionate about performing you know it's yeah, um it. what is what is what is that you know i've met people and they really say that they they need to perform you know and if they're not performing and they're not getting out there they're not yeah they 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 feel lost you know they feel like uh yeah it's that's that that's the thing the gift to the world is this your would you say this is your gift to the world your comedy juggling <sighs> I don't know. I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't. I don't know. It feels like if I say this is my gift to the world, it feels. Uh, one like, of your gifts. Let's say one of your gifts. Then. Let's put. It, let's like, make it a bit lower. Yeah. Let's let's bring it down. Let's bring it down a few pegs. It's something I love doing, and it's something that I, you know I can't imagine doing anything else, and it's something that I never. Th I never think I'll perfect it. I don't think you can perfect it. And I love the fact that you you can constantly get better at it. Like for me, I feel like my juggling is there and I feel like my performing has always been there and my comedy has always been there. So I've spent the time always trying to bring that up to there and then make them go together. That's my aim. Because this is limitless. You, you can always just get better. Um, but I've always tried to 
bring my hang on, which one was which this was the juggling i've always tried to bring my performance and comedy up to the juggling because uh, that's the thing I've, I've done for less time really so um i like you know because i've been juggling for for many years and comedy only started really when i was about 18 19. i think that's still a really new skill for me and trying to figure that out in the same way and get to know that in the same way that i know juggling is is really interesting for me but yeah is that a boring answer <laughs> no, no 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 not at all and um <laughs> This in um, in Pels of Juggling, you know, there's a whole chapter on uh, on comedy, and um, there's this concept that um, it's so much more satisfying to get a laugh from an audience than uh, than, uh, than a round of applause. You know, it's mm. the, the laughter is is uh, is beautiful when it when it's working out. Yeah, I think I don't know because a, a round of applause is kind of it, it's nice. Don't get me wrong, it's nice, but it's kind of forced. Like if a kid comes onto the stage and does this hey then everyone's gonna go everyone's gonna clap they're kind of forced to right but uh it, it, it it's, it's a forced response but laughter is an impulse that, that's something that you do by that the audience does by accident they're not like okay he's gonna tell a joke and we're all gonna laugh no like if i do a trick on stage and i say thank you then they all know uh, we all have to clap but they don't have to laugh that's something they that's something they do um involuntarily you know and i think that's it's hard for me it's harder to earn that because they don't have to do it and often you know they don't <laughs> <laughs> they don't you know i think there's a big thing about being honest you know it's like uh the more we show up and the more we're really like frank about things and also frank about drops and our errors and frank about how we are this also yeah. touches on people's humanity. The humanity is a big thing, you know, about, about, uh, and, um, and juggling always has this thing like we drop, we fail, you know, and, uh, if you cover it up and that's one thing, but if you share this, this fact that, uh, that also you, you drop and, uh, then, uh, then people can, then they can relate to you better and they, mm -hmm. and they, they follow you then after this. Yeah. So, um, I, in my show, I have in, in my 45 minute show, I have three sections where i um drop on purpose in the same way every single time and they're there for a reason so if you see my 45 minute show and there's four drops you know really that's one drop uh because the three are on purpose because I, I think it's important to do i think an audience uh want to see what happens when a juggler drops and if the juggler drops and something great and funny happens then the audience i feel like they can relax a bit i feel like they they can be like, okay, oh, we're in, we're in safe hands. So if he drops, we can all chill and relax, no problem. We'll get through it together. <laughs> Whereas if you see a whole show and there's no drops at all, I think it it can be, uh, it, particularly for my type of show, I think it can it, it makes the audience a little tense, in my opinion. Right. Okay. <laughs> so um, what? So you you carry on juggling, right? So what is it that uh, you're passionate about with your juggling? Um, I saw like a, a little while ago, I saw you doing lots of different things where you you they seemed like you also like a workout with juggling, you know? And yeah. um, I thought that was quite, quite, quite interesting. And um, well, that was coming from a, um, I was doing a juggling challenge with a, with a friend of mine called Cal Courtney. We were doing like, I would film a trick and then he had a week to learn and film the same trick and we'd go backwards and forwards. And, uh, he, he's a really good juggler and he pushed me uh, physically like there was one where i had to do lots of these kind of lunges and i'm like oh boy lunges <laughs> <laughs> so then i did one with like lots of abs exercises and um yeah so we're just kind of because we realized that we couldn't push each other juggling wise because we were about the same level so we we're like okay how else can we push each other but still using juggling um but make it really difficult for the other person so we we're doing weird fitness things Oh, that's very interesting. It's, it's interesting. I always think it's uh, interesting how horizontal we can go. You know, it's like we don't have to take juggling always like more and more and more and more difficult. Difficult. We, if we start going sideways, like adding this sort of more of your body in there, more expression in there, more poetry in there, yeah. more comedy in there, it goes this way, this way. <laughs> yeah, it's endless. But, um, I don't know, John. If you feel like, do you feel like showing us some of these like tricky stuff? You stuff you're all working. Yeah, I can try. I don't know. If, 
I might have to fiddle around with the camera a bit. Okay, yeah, no worries, no worries, no yeah, nobody is going to you for that. And uh, Peter, Peter Duncan, he's watching, and he will, he will like these fitness ones oh, as well. Hi, Peter. So, excuse my 1960s carpet. <laughs> <laughs> we will excuse your 1960s carpet, definitely. Okay, can you see me? In <clears throat> yeah, okay. yeah, you're fully, you're fully in the screen. Yeah. So this is one. Oh, I was working with a company. I was working with Gandini Juggling, and there's a whole. Uh, show called clowns and queens and there's a whole section of just juggling on the floor so we learned a lot of um floor exercises but it turns out they're also quite good abs exercises so this is one of them <laughs> like juggling here like this oh no forget that forget that okay <laughs> like no like, worries we, we didn't see that these are really good abs exercises yeah and these kind of things. Um, anything like that, really, where they're kind of lifting the legs. Or, oh, yeah, this was a good one, too. Um, I don't know if I can do it. Whoa. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's cool. And then, folks, this. <laughs> you do it for a few minutes, and it really starts, you start to feel it. Yeah, and that lungy one. We want to see the lungy one as well, John. Oh, I, don't, I don't know if I can do it, actually. I'll handle you back up. Um, can't remember what it was. I know it had lots of this. Yeah, that was right. That was it. What was it? Oh, yeah. And no, I think it was a box. I can't remember. You yeah, to... yeah. Something like that. So there's two balls doing this, and then I think one was doing this. Yeah, so I tried it. I couldn't do it at all. Imagine two other balls up there. Yeah, I couldn't work it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're a lot of fun i imagine there's probably a whole genre of exercise juggling didn't jason jason garfield do something like that probably you know like juggler size or probably probably oh, yeah. going, no? <laughs> and also verena verena rao from germany she does a lot of um juggling fit stuff and, oh nice um, yeah i think it's cool i think it's cool and um but and you also seem to have like um um like some tea bag tricks as well how did that all come out i mean oh well awesome? yeah on my mug oh, can you see my mug this is <laughs> a mug uh the designs are by donald grant and ah. um, yeah lots of tricks with tea bags on this mug you can buy the mug from my website Ding. um but yeah it actually came about because uh, about how long ago i don't know Eight years ago, I was uh, in a relationship with a French performer who was, she juggled a bit, but she mainly did trick bike and slack rope. And I was also good friends with Luke Wilson, who's a, just the best, you know, one of the best jugglers in my opinion. And he did an act with the teacup and the tea bag. So then I said to him, hey, well, me and my girlfriend want to do this duet with both of us doing stuff with tea bags and teacups is that cool and he's like yeah yeah fine no problem and then uh, and then me and her broke up <laughs> so then i thought oh well i'll see if i can do, do something by myself and i had an interesting way of making the act with the teacup and tea bag i found the music and i tried to add a move each day so every time i put the kettle on i'd click the kettle and i'd add a move to the routine each day until eventually however much tea i drank uh was how long the the, the routine was but it's quite a fun thing to do really just I was in a, I was on a gig somewhere as well. So I was in a hotel room and I couldn't practice. So I was like, oh, I would like to make something. So I did a little thing with a teacup and a tea bag there. Yeah, it, it turns out it's, <clears throat> it's one of my favorite bits actually, but it's also one of the least practical because no one can see it. Like it's, wow. it, <clears throat> if you're on a big stage, no one can see it. So <laughs> it's the type of thing I could only perform in like really small places, but it's good to have it up my sleeve just in case I ever, need it yeah oh, there, are lot, there are lots of stages which are <coughs> closer closer to the audience as well yeah yeah but i, I particularly enjoyed this um you know you know some of the like creating let's talk a little bit about creating creating like a comedy juggling routine now you know it's like um quite quite often 
I mean, sometimes it's like we sit down, perhaps, and just build something. <clears throat> but oftentimes, uh, there are bits of this act we did, we tried a lot, long time ago. We sort of put things all put things together a little bit. Yeah. And um, but but this way of creating of like one thing after another, that's also really tiring. You know, you have to be very determined. You know, if we like, okay, now I'm going to go for it and uh, and create this thing one step at a time, and remembering it as well. You know, forget it. You're like, oh, what did I do? And um, just if you'd like to talk a little bit about this process, your creative process. I, I don't know. I think I don't have a set way of creating. I don't think there's um, I have I have a few ways, but they, they tend to happen organically. I think so, for example, my club juggling routine, my comedy one that started off as me having just three tricks and I would have those tricks and I'd be like, right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And that was it. And that was about three minutes. It's now kind of expanded. It, it's it's swelled to like a twelve minute bit now. Um, just over time, really, over time of like, okay, I'll do the I'll do the same thing, and then this thing happens, and then that got a laugh. Okay, so I'll keep that in, and then I'm like, oh, I want to put this routine, I want to put this trick in there somewhere. So how can I wedge that in? So I wedge that in. So like, oh, that works, and then it just grows and grows and grows. So it just kind of ended up swelling, really. I've had a, a few other trial bits. and error in front of the audience is what, is what you're saying as well. Yeah, so I, a lot of trial and error. I film all of my shows. Um, I either film all of my shows or I record all of my shows because the amount of times where I've come off stage and I'm like, oh, that bit was great. I'll write that down. And then I do not. <laughs> and then I completely forget what had happened. Um, so, yeah, lots of trial and error. And I, I often – one of the ways I try and put things into a show, like I've got this trick at the moment where I bounce a ball in my head, juggle three clubs, and then go into a pattern and uh, go back into the ball bouncing on my head. And I've been trying to get that in the show for ages. And I actually found a way to loosely do it during during lockdown this year, because um, I've been doing lots of online shows. And uh, it's just a matter of trial and error. Like I think I would always, if I was on stage and I had this bit that works and this bit that works, if I've got a new trick, I would put that in the middle just so i know okay if that fails i've still got this thing that's going to happen right, yeah, kind of yeah. sandwich it between um but yeah i'm always trying out new bits and if i'm trying out new tricks and i don't know if the trick is going to work i would make sure that i've got a really good backup plan so if it works great but if it doesn't work i need to have something really funny to say or do or else it's not i can't really put it on stage i can't just be like oh that no, didn't work and then move on. No, it doesn't sit well with me. So, yeah, I think all of the things I try on stage, they've all in a way got safety nets if something doesn't work. Okay, this is all. This is pretty good advice for people as well, I reckon. Yeah, there was one bit I had where, and it wasn't a bit I was proud of, actually. It was something that I used to do on stage and I just kind of thought, it's fine, but it's not good. And it was, I used to juggle six or seven balls and someone would catch them in a hat and that trick would be four minutes and it bugged me for a few reasons one because i didn't do any hat manipulation but yet i still had a hat and, I, and it just kind of bugged me that i had to travel with this hat just for that trick uh and i didn't do any hat manipulation um so then one day i accidentally forgot my hat so i was like oh no i still got to do got to do that bit because i don't have any more material and i had a brown paper bag that I had from the takeaway lunch. So I thought, okay, I'll just use that for now. This is a street show. And I juggled the seven balls. I threw the first one, it landed in the bag. Great. Second one, I threw it, it landed in the bag and the bag ripped. So I was just like, that that's perfect. It's, it's perfect because it can only get worse from that point in it, in a, in a comedic sense. So now I've, so I, by the end of that routine, by the time they catch them in the bag, the bag's all ripped off, the handle's coming off, they're holding the bottom. It's just, it's all a complete mess. And it's a funny bit. So I went home after that show and I ordered 300 brown paper bags. <laughs> and now I use them. In, now it's like a 12 and a half minute bit uh, that I'm proud of and it's good. It just came from a happy accident of leaving my silly hat at home. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, that's cool. That's how it is, you know. It's um, that's how it is, and that's why you really need to perform a lot, you know. And sometimes I, I've created created some shows, you know, more more like theatre circus shows, 
And if I've only performed, ended up performing like 10 or 12 times, you know, I feel, it doesn't feel good, you know. It feels like I've not really got fully in there yeah. yet, you know. But, um, but um, yeah, from the, the school I did in Switzerland, you know, the idea is that you are ready when you, like, you, you create the show and then you are ready the first time, you know, but obviously it matures afterwards. Yeah. But I think this it's a pretty hard, hardcore way of, um, a hardcore way of working you know because when you work with the audience when you create with the audience it um it changes and it becomes more ple pleasant for the audience so what sort of training have you done um uh john have you, have you been what sort of have you been to any schools have you done studied comedy acting dance uh, uh, and no officially <laughs> i didn't go to any circus school i have never done any formal training uh, I think I've just done a lot um, in the sense of I don't think I did a good show. Well, so I started performing for money at the age of 10. So I was doing lots of weekends and school holidays I'd be performing. And I did that all the way up to the, about the age of 17. And then at 18, I moved to London where I started working a lot with Gandini and started working on solo shows. I don't think I did a good show in the first 15 years of my performing life. I honestly don't think I did. I think I did so much just inexperienced, bad show because I didn't have any formal training. I didn't know what worked and what didn't work. So I just tried, I just tried a lot of stuff. And um, yeah, I, I can only say that I, I feel like the past maybe three or four years, I've been happy with my work. Before that, I think it was fine. I was, uh, <laughs> I was, I either didn't like my work or at best I, I accepted it. <laughs> I just don't think I had the experience. I didn't know what I was doing. So I was just kind of learning on the job. The only time I ever had any direction was when I was working with Gandini and they would, you know, then I was always part of a bigger thing. So it kind of took the pressure off me, you know, so when you're on stage by yourself, you can't, can't blame anyone else sadly <laughs> yeah but i think yeah i haven't had any formal training i've just kind of just been really into it like i watch a lot of comedy i study i study it as opposed to just letting it go in you know i think i like to i enjoy kind of dissecting why things work and you know why it doesn't work i think it's important to see as much as you can you know the more that yeah, goes that comes there out some, yeah. there are some amazing there are some amazing comedians out there and uh when well i was in switzerland in um in the dimitri museum they played the, the film the grok clown routine yeah. you know, it was pretty, i i you know I, he's, I, it's so good he was so good that i'd feel bad you know i'd like go yeah no, it's no way same. it's like that's just you know i feel it in my stomach i'm like no. <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of think how, how can you be so good <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Just amazing, amazing. Mm -hmm. But it's persistence, doing it again and again and again. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and I, I think there's also a mixture, you know, it's I tend to be more of an artist where I get bored of things very quickly and want to change them, you know? Yeah. And there's um, there's the aspect of the more like um, the craftsman side of it where you, where, where you keep at it, you know, and um, you're not looking for like the new, the novelty all the time, you know? Yeah 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 i agree i think it's i don't know i've never searched for like and i don't, I don't think it's good if you're trying to make something that you're proud of I, i've never searched for what i think the audience would enjoy i always think that's not a good way it's not a good way to create but i wouldn't be a good way for me to create something i think if you're thinking about oh, what's the audience going to enjoy, then you can't please an entire audience. And I think I, I know that I would be more financially successful if I had other certain things in my show, but I'm just, I'm too stubborn <laughs> and I, I would, I'm not prepared to do it. Um, yeah. Are you, are you talking about like selling yourself, like doing things you don't, you don't feel like doing or? I like I know, for example, and I've got nothing against it. There's people that do it, and it's fantastic the way they do it. But I know it wouldn't suit me. I'm talking about if my show had a bit a bit with a draft unicycle, 
or any dangerous props, knives, chainsaws, uh, fire, or anything, or mm. any, anything with LEDs, or anything glittery. I know that clubs look like they're spinning faster if they're glittery, but just spin them faster. <laughs> that's, that's always been my opinion. And, uh, you know, I just think I'm too, I'm, I'm too stubborn, and it's one of my weaknesses. All of my props in my show are plain white, and it's because I feel like pl plain white, you can't, you can't hide behind that as a color. Like my clubs are plain white because when they spin, if I spin them fast, it's not an illusion. It's, it really is that fast. And it's also a clear color. And also any other colors I feel like have some kind of emotion or style to them. Like if my clubs were all bright pink, that would mean something different to if they were just plain white, you know? And I kind of want the props to speak for themselves as opposed to, um, and I know I'm aware of how silly this might sound, but this is my loose philosophy. Uh, I want the props to speak for themselves as opposed to them, you know, if I had leopard print clubs or, um, you know, uh, bright blue balls, it would mean something different. Do you know what I mean? Is, does that yeah, make sense? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, no, there's, uh, it's, um, the, the white it's classic you no know? white white props is pretty classic i would say yeah and it's the same reason i wear a suit on stage like i wear a suit on stage because i like that classic look i like that like modern gentleman juggler like this is my job i like to wear a good suit it's a fitted suit i it's my i, I like to treat it as a job it, i'm not messing around i'm here for business <laughs> this is this is what i got i like that kind of you know, it's like Jerry Seinfeld. He's a big inspiration of mine. And I just love that, like, he always wears a suit. It's kind of honoring the um, showmanship of the past. And it's very much like a, we're here for business. Let's do the work. Let's, you know, track suit and, uh, track suit and an open shirt is for a different time. So who else is, inspires you or has inspired you? I'll probably use like a huge long list there, but uh, I, a few. Do you want jugglers or non-jugglers? both whatever you like okay and, say, and if they're not jugglers say like what what inspires you about them perhaps and also what, what inspires you about the jugglers as well maybe so i really like um uh jerry seinfeld i think he inspires me a lot as a as a comedian he's just very he's a hard worker he he said he wakes up he wakes up every day and he treats his job like a job like normally someone would go nine to five at a job He'll sit at his desk nine to five and do that as a job, trying to write jokes because that's his job. Sometimes he won't come up with any jokes. Sometimes he'll come up with loads, but he's still, you've turned up for the job, you know? And I like that kind of discipline. Um, I really like uh, Ben Folds, the, the musician. He's a pianist and he's, I find him really interesting because his, some of his music comes across as quite pop and mainstream but when you really look into it, it's a completely different, bizarre uh, thing. And he's, re he re he's really in his own genre, in my opinion. And I, I love his style of just like um, kind of going on his own path. Um, mm. Yeah, he happens to fall into mainstream, which I really like. Uh, jugglers, of course, um, Wes, Wes Peden. Uh, I think he's great. Um, and uh, two jugglers I really like at the moment. Uh, Jack Denger. Is it Denger or Denga? I don't know, but he's really great. And Spencer Androly, I think he's fantastic. Um, but yeah, the list the list is so big. I think there's people that have inspired me throughout the years. Uh, like Gandini really helped me out a lot when I was young. They kind of got me into this business. And Steve Rawlings as well, he he helped a lot. Um, I saw his show when I was about 12 years old. My parents took me to see a show and just kind of made me think whoa you can do this as a job <laughs> i just had no, no idea really and yeah it was just one of the funniest things i've ever seen um yeah i'm blanked now there's no, a comedian, no, no worries. There's a comedian called nick helm who i really like who um whenever you go to see his shows you don't really know you know he's a comedian but it wouldn't be like nick helm the comedian because you go along sometimes he'll do He'll start with a song or he'll do some poetry. He might do an illusion. <laughs> he'll do some audience participation. He'll do some comedy. Like you don't know what he's going to do. He's just, can't, you can't pigeonhole him. And I think I really like performers like that who are just like, mm. they, that, they are mm. the performance. 
not like I'd like to get to the stage of my career where it's not just John Udry the juggler, it's just John Udry, and then people can come along and see me do something. I think I'd like to get to that stage, but I feel I'm far off it at the moment. But you know, there's always always somewhere to go. Yeah, sometimes we're closer than than it seems, eh? Maybe, yeah. Who knows? I keep trying, so that's good. Yeah, no, it's, uh, and I think what you said about this, this, I think like forcing yourself nine to five to write jokes is like pretty hardcore, eh? But like just having an hour, you know, or fifty minutes where totally. you're not distracted, anything, you're just like let an empty space come over you, you know, and you just you just try and find this inspiration come out, you know. It's like I think that's yeah. a pretty cool way of, and writing generally, I find is 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 a cool way of just like freeing up the creative uh creative really idea. Nice. I find so John really yeah. sorry wait what were you gonna say <laughs> no no I, um I want to ask you now this question so um what um oh no it's easy <laughs> it's like uh so you've been juggling for like ages now like I think probably about the same length of time as I I have except you started when you were six <laughs> and I started when I was nineteen but um uh what would you what advice would you uh, like if you would have been list if you would have listened to your own advice what would have been when you were let's say 20. that is a good question i think my advice would be to 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 little to little me is um I think I should follow my gut more and not try and please the audience too much. Like I should perform what I would like to see. Cause, cause I'm a, I'm a person. I didn't need to tell you that, but I'm a person and I like a certain thing. So if I like a certain thing, the chances are there's going to be someone in the audience who really likes that certain thing too. So if I perform what I would like to see, the chances are some other people are going to want to see it and I would enjoy doing it. And I think the first, like, maybe 15 years of my performing, I was constantly trying to figure out what the audience wanted and constantly trying to think, okay, well, maybe I'll use this music because it's trendy and they will love it. And they don't love it. Of course they don't love it because they're watching someone awkwardly on stage do something to music that he clearly doesn't like. <laughs> and and I think I should follow my gut more. That's what okay. I was that's what I wish I'd done. Because I do that now. Like I, I only perform things that I think are good or I, I have some kind of faith in. And sometimes it works. And sometimes it doesn't. But that's the only way of finding out. Like I think I know what I know more now about what I don't like to to do. And I think um I've only found that from focusing more on what I do like. Excellent. No, that's really, um, that's really very interesting, very inspiring for other people. I think it's what you were saying earlier on, you know, when you were saying about not wanting to please the audience, you know, and uh, so somehow it's come out much clearer now, you know, like, yeah, I mean, I'm not, not your own taste, essentially. Yeah, I'm not consciously trying to displease them. <laughs> Let's make that clear. No, no, it's very clear. No, no, you're, you're it's ironic, like pleasing yourself, you'll probably end up pleasing the audience much more yeah so i think audiences like to see on stage i think audiences like to see someone having fun and if like an audience will be able to tell if i'm performing a routine to i don't know james brown which i like or if i'm performing a routine to i don't know something in the charts um, i don't know anything in the charts <laughs> Crazy Frog, is that still in? <laughs> anyway. Well, I don't know. <laughs> like, uh, if I perform a routine to that, they're going to know which one is true and which one I'm passionate about, I think. So sure. if I'm having fun on stage, the audience are going to enjoy someone having fun. It's like it's like watching Angus Young from ACDC. He's playing guitar, but he's rolling around on his knees on the floor. That's more enjoyable to watch than just someone there with his tongue out just going... Yeah, yeah. You know, getting yeah, no, no. Into no, it. I, I say this the, essentially. This is being passionate about what you're doing, so you're being, you're activated yourself, and it's also this like 
you know lots of people say what 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 are you saying with your art you know and and when you're in this space you have something to say i find you know, mm. you're not saying something concrete you know perhaps you are you're perhaps you're saying i, I can have fun on my own you know perhaps this yeah. is uh, but but still it's it, you, you're transmitting you're coming across to the audience yeah mm. totally yeah hmm. okay john so um yeah. we're going to close the broadcast very soon have you got any last uh thoughts you'd like to share with, uh, with the audience um if anyone's watching this yeah, no, there are there are there there were there were ten, the ten twelve people watching. So, are they? Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Where are you? Seeing? And uh, lots more people will watch uh, the recording afterwards. Great. Well, if then I'm because it's locked down in England now for, I don't know, it could be forever. Who knows the way we're dealing with it? Um, I'm going to be running some free online workshops if anyone wants to see them. They're going to be on Zoom. I'm advertising them on my Facebook page and my Instagram page. Uh, the first one is this Saturday, and this Saturday is just a learn to juggle three balls workshop. Uh, it's going to be on Zoom, so if you want to see it, then just send me a message and I'll send you the Zoom link, link, and it's all free. Just come along and just learn some silly tricks just for fun, just to get us through this lockdown. Something to yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, excellent, John, excellent. And I think it's so important in this moment to focus on what we have to give. Totally, you know? yeah. Because that's all we have, essentially. That's it, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, you know, if I, if I could do anything else uh, to help anyone, I would. <laughs> but I've got no other skills. So Okay, so next week we have um, Stanislav, I find it very hard to say his surname, Isotsky, and he does um, some, he's, he does, five balls with one foot yeah he's the foot guy yeah Whoa. crazy crazy beautiful beautiful he's the guy that did three balls in one hand and three balls in, on a foot right at the yeah. same time yeah 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 Mad. quite interested uh in, under in working out what um yeah how he trains this you know what motivates yeah. him as well and um people watching and people watching later it's very helpful i think um for other people that want to watch it later on to know what the takeaways were from this for you so if you could take like a couple of minutes and just write in the comments, what was it for you? Uh, this this conversation, what um, yeah, what resonated with you? What was important about this uh, conversation with John? And um, so, catch you later. We're going to end this uh, broadcast now. So, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining Cheers. us. And um, and uh, see you next time.